In this video, we will show you how to replace your fuel pump sending module on this Dodge Ram. This will be mounted inside of your fuel tank. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing we'll do is make our way under the hood. We're looking for the fuse box. We'll lift this up by grabbing onto these two tabs and quickly have a look at the legend along the inside. What we're looking for is the fuel system relay, number 51 right there. Now, if we were to hold this right next to where the fuse box is, we're going to find that same relay. Go ahead and take hold of that, give it a little wiggle and lift it up and out of there. A quick look for corrosion. We'll set this aside temporarily. Now we can hop inside the vehicle and attempt to start it. Now, once you attempted to start the vehicle and you found that it did not start and run, continue on by reinstalling that relay. You wanna make sure you press it in there as far as possible so you're sure it's making complete contact. We'll put on a protective cover after that and move along to the negative battery terminal. Okay, friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing we want to do is disconnect our negative battery terminal. To disconnect the negative battery terminal, I'll be using an 11 millimeter wrench. I just want to loosen up this nut just enough that I can remove the terminal end from the battery. We'll set that aside so it's making no contact. Let's make our way over to the fuel door. Remove the fuel cap, give it a quick inspection and set it aside. Now let's make our way underneath the driver's side rear of the vehicle. We're looking for the fuel filler neck and the return line. To remove these, we'll be using an eight millimeter or flathead screwdriver. We'll just loosen up the clamp a little bit and we should be able to slide that down and out of the way. Once you have that loose, go ahead and remove the hose from the tube itself, being extremely careful not to damage the hose. Give each hose a quick inspection, make sure it is still soft and pliable and it's not torn, worn, or damaged in any way. Now that I have that one off, I'll do the exact same thing for the filler hose. A quick check, this feels good as well. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is apply support underneath your fuel tank because we're going to be removing each of our fuel straps. To remove the fuel straps, you'll find that you have a stud that comes down from the frame and it has a 15 millimeter nut holding it in place. Remove that nut. There's that mounting nut. We'll clean and inspect our mounting hardware, replace it as necessary. Let's do the same to the front strap. Once you have the nut off of there, we'll continue on by taking hold of the strap. We're going to pull it down. Now we can flex that strap out of our way. And now we'll do the same to the rear strap. Let's take this strap. We're going to bring it around to the slot and you should be able to pull it right out. Now we can start lowering the fuel tank down. While doing so, we wanna be paying attention to our fuel hoses along the driver's side frame. We'll be bringing this down and carefully put each of those hoses on the inside of the frame rail. Once you have the fuel tank lowered enough that you can reach up along the top, we'll start by disconnecting the electrical connector. For this electrical connector, you'll find that you have a red locking tab. I'll use a small pocket screwdriver to slide this towards the rear of the vehicle to unlock this. Now, once that's unlocked, you don't necessarily have to fully remove the red locking tab. The next thing we'll do is squeeze right where my index finger is, and we should be able to draw this off of the fuel pump assembly. A quick check for corrosion. Assuming that looks good, we can set that aside. Now, just to the rear of that, you'll find that you have your fuel line. For this, it has two locking tabs, one on either side of it. You wanna squeeze those in, and then you should be able to draw the line off. Sometimes you have to use pliers for this, or you could just use your fingers. It really depends on what works best for you. There's that. Now this blue locking tab will come off of this, but we'll do it once we get it down where we can see it a little easier. Now we'll pay attention to this return line. For this, once again, it has two locking ears. We'll squeeze those in and we should be able to slide this up and off of here. Now we can start bringing down the fuel tank the rest of the way so we can gain access to that fuel pump assembly. While doing so, we wanna pay attention to our two hoses. We don't wanna crimp those or damage them in any way. Thank you. 
Once you have your fuel tank down to a workable position, we'll continue on to removing this line across the top of it. Now for this, there's an area that you want to try to squeeze together, and once you have those two ears squeezed, we can pull this right off. We'll just give that a quick inspection. At this point, we can continue on to removing the locking ring that's holding the fuel pump assembly down to the fuel tank. To remove this, you want to make sure that you remove any debris from around this area so nothing falls down inside of the fuel tank. There is a fuel tank ring removal tool that you could slide right on top of this and spin it. Not everybody has one of those. What you could do is continue on with a small pry bar and a hammer and just give it a couple loving bonks counterclockwise to remove it. Before I go too much further, I'll just give it a quick blast with compressed air. Now once you have that locking ring off of there, the next thing you want to do is just pay quick attention to it, make sure it is still reusable. If it looks like it's dry rotted or cracked in any way, you want to make sure you replace it. Let's take hold of this, we'll give it a little wiggle to break it free. You might have to pry it up and out of there, just be careful not to damage the fuel tank in any way. It is probable that there'll be a whole bunch of fuel still inside of this sending unit, so you want to be extremely careful. We'll make sure that we recycle it properly. Let's remove the gasket from in the fuel tank. The next thing we'll do is clean up the top of the fuel tank where that fuel pump will sit. Now we can get ready to install our brand new fuel pump module. We'll take this and put it in the proper positioning. Just slide it right down in. Now before we slide it down too far, we want to put the gasket into the fuel tank here. Slide this down and in. Let's just make sure that the gasket's seated properly. You don't want it falling in anywhere. Now before we bring it all the way down till it's completely bottomed out, it's important to make sure you put on the ring. Now we can install that locking ring. We'll just carefully put this over here. We're going to have to bring it around. Here we are. Once you feel as though you have it flat and level, we can continue on by pressing this down. And we'll continue bringing it down as far as we can with the locking ring. Now that I have this started on, I'm going to double check all the way around to make sure that it's seated properly. We'll just continue on by tightening it until it's good and tight. You wanna make sure there's a good seal. Double check that fuel pump, make sure it's in there nice and tight. Now on the original fuel pump assembly, you'll find that you have that plastic clip. Just use a small pocket screwdriver. We're going to get underneath the ear and start gently pressing it off. We wanna be careful not to break this because we do need to reuse it. We'll just give it a quick inspection, make sure it's not cracked or damaged. Now we can put this directly into the fuel line. Now at this point, we can start raising up the fuel tank until we can gain access to reconnecting our fuel lines and our electrical connector. Let's take that plastic piece and we'll slide it right into the fuel line here. Let's get it lined up. Press it in, listen for a click from both sides. Let's connect in our electrical connector. We'll press this in, listen for a click. There's our click. Give it a tug to make sure it is secured and then make sure you lock it in with the red locking tab. Now we can attach this. Bring the line right over, slide it into position. Listen for a click from that. Double check to make sure it is properly secured. Now we'll continue bringing the fuel tank up so we can connect in our last fuel line. Let's get that fuel line in place. You might have to shift the fuel tank around a little bit. Press it in, listen for a click, give it a nice tug, make sure it's secured. You do not want a fuel leak up along the top of your fuel tank. Once you have the fuel tank all the way up against the body of the vehicle, we'll be continuing on with our straps. We'll take the forward one and carefully start bringing it around between the drive shaft and the fuel tank. 
Carefully press it all the way up onto that stud. If you have a hard time, you could put a jack underneath this area to continue pressing it up while you press this into position. Start on that mounting nut. Now we will not tighten this yet. We're gonna move along to putting on the rear one as well. Let's get the rearward strap on here. It just slides right into the groove on the frame there. Now we can swing this around, put it on the stud and start on that mounting nut. Now we can snug these up. You want to start with the rearward strap first and then we'll tighten the forward one. Let's remove the support. Let's reattach our fuel fill hose. Slide that right onto the filler neck. We'll take hold of the clamp, slide it into its original position and tighten it up. Double check to make sure that's nice and tight. Now we can reconnect our negative battery terminal. These are 11 millimeter, make sure this is nice and tight. Now let's make our way back here. We'll install our fuel cap. Make sure that's nice and tight. Close the latch. At this point, go ahead and start up the vehicle. Let it run for a little while, make sure you don't have a fuel leak, and then take your vehicle for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.